I've just upgraded to the Rode PSA1 microphone boom arm. So in this video, I'll show you how I set it up using the desk insert option rather than the clamp and with no XLR cable visible. If you want to jump to that, the timestamp is on screen now, but for the regulars, first there's a bit of context around what I'm doing and where, as well as a revamp of my desk. If you recall, the room at the back of the house that was being used as a dining room by the previous owners was going to be our guest room as it has the downstairs shower room next to it. As a contingency, in case we were ever struggling to pay the mortgage, another consideration when we bought the place was the ability to block off this area of the house and rent it out as an Airbnb using the rather generous tax-free rent-a-room scheme. Then lockdowns happened and I'd forgotten my general tendency towards misanthropy, so it's out with the guest room and instead I'm commandeering this space as my home office and doubling up as my YouTube studio because that sounds way more cool. And technically, I do need a place to store and charge my camera gear and edit these videos. So this is what the room looks like currently, and it's going to take a bunch of small projects to get it how I want. And I'm starting with the desk because it's in a bad way. I've had it since I was a teenager and I did think about getting a new one and I was eyeing up the standing desk by Fully which looked very nice or I thought I could get the automatic legs and attach a wood worktop but this desk hasn't failed me yet plus I'm going to be drilling a big hole in it so I'm sticking with it. First task was to give it a good sanding and I started off with 60 grit sandpaper with my random orbital sander from Lidl. This took off the old varnished and smoothed out most of the dents and scratches. The harder to reach areas I did by hand and then I came back with 120 grit over everything and and then a third pass on the top only of 220 grit. To get the sawdust off, I busted out the leaf blower, naturally, and then using a rag with white spirit, I got the rest of the dust off. This didn't seem to raise the grain at all, so it was ready for its finish. I did consider staining the desk, but I wasn't going for perfection and the pine does match my filing cabinet. Now, I've had the moniker of woodworker on my website for some years and whilst I've worked with timber, I'm yet to do much proper woodworking. I'm a charlatan, but I'm keeping it there for motivation. Anyway, I don't know an awful lot about wood finishes, but before I ever started a YouTube channel, I asked Keith at Rag and Bow Brown to make a video on the topic. Recently, I had a comment on one of my videos from Alistair Dimmock asking me if I could make a video about the various types of finishes that are available. If you're wondering why I changed my name, Ali is what my friends call me, and I figured no one outside Scotland would know how to spell my first name. It's a really good video and I'll link it below, but now I have the luxury of being able to text him and for a simple refinish that won't look too orange in colour, at least for a couple of years, he recommended screw fixes, no nonsense water-based varnish. I watered down the first coat by 10% and applied with a brush going with the grain. The tin says it's recoatable within four hours, but in the sun it seemed to dry within an hour and a half, so I did two coats all over and on top a third for luck. For an afternoon's work, it turned out pretty well, I think. Certainly much improved. So onto the boom arm. To date for the voiceovers for my videos, I've been using this cheap one by Newer to hold my mic, which does the job, but the clamp doesn't fit very well to my desk and it's prone to falling off and taking my mic with it. So I'm upgrading to the Rode PSA1 boom arm, which is about four times the price and does exactly the same thing, but it comes with a metal desk insert as well as a clamp. So first I set it up with the clamp, which is a lot sturdier than the last one, but again, it's not deep enough to accommodate the desk's timber support in order to be able to get the clamp all the way over for the full support. So after using the clamp to figure out where I wanted the arm, I could then mark out where I wanted the desk insert. To use this, your desk needs to be 25 millimeters deep or thicker, and the center needs to be positioned a minimum of 64 millimeters or two and a half inches from the side of the desk. Because I've got that supporting bit of timber, I situated mine 80 millimeters from the side. To cut the hole, I'm using a flat or spade bit. The instructions recommend a 22 or 25 millimeter wide one, but I only had a 20 millimeter, so I'm gonna have to make it work. It was a bit tight, so I used a file to widen the space a little and then used my nylon hammer, which I've previously used for installing windows, to get the insert down flush with the desk. I did get a bit of tear out, but nothing that a spot of varnish won't disguise. Despite being a very tight fit, I screwed on the nut from the underside all the same. So to connect a mic, you can either use a USB cable direct to your computer, which is what I've been doing until recently, or you can connect via an XLR cable into an audio interface to increase the gain on the audio, which is my current setup. Either way, the cable has to run along the boom arm somehow, and the simplest way is to use the supplied Velcro cable ties, which I've seen are really common. However, for a cleaner look, the PSA1 has channels within the frame to run the cable. The problem is that XLR cable has two large heads on either side, which won't pass through. So to do this, I cut off the male adapter end and could then feed the cable through. You could do this for either the clamp or the desk insert, but the insert allows for the cable to come out on the underside of the desk, which makes the whole thing look really on point. 
Rather than desoldering and then resoldering the original connector, I bought a new mail connector for a couple of quid and I stripped the wires back at the end of the cable I'd previously cut. Then in a process known as tinning, I applied solder to these wires which keeps the wire strands together and helps with the connections. Next I could add solder to the cups on the connector which makes the next step of connecting everything together much easier as it's just a case of reheating the solder. Before that though, I checked the old connector to see which wires go where and made a little diagram to follow. I'll link below some better videos than mine on soldering XLR cable as I haven't soldered anything in 20 years. In fact, I'm pretty sure I uh, borrowed this soldering iron from school. But you can see that with a steady hand, it's easy enough even for someone who's new to it. There are a couple of tips I picked up though. First is not to blow on the solder to cool it as that may cause cracking and loose connections down the line. And second is not to overheat the cups because that can cause the plastic to melt and cause the pins to go askew and not fit properly. Then I could screw on the metal sleeve to the outer cover which I'd put on the cable prior to soldering and then I could give it a whirl. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Not too shabby. For the final flourish, I wanted to hide the excess cable. Of course, I could have just cut the cable shorter when I resoldered, but I may need the slack in case I move things around in future. So I found this plastic pipe holding thing amongst my collection of odd bits, which was the perfect fit, and I could then screw it to the underside of the desk, being careful not to fold the cable too tightly, otherwise the internal wiring may fray. So that's the install of this one done and I have to say I'm quite impressed with it. It's very smooth in terms of its movement and it stretches quite far which brings me to a point which I kind of regret which is not putting it in the corner and then I could have risen it up vertically and then hooked it behind my iMac which probably would have been a bit neater but as it's quite a good looking boom arm uh, as boom arms go I don't mind it being on display too much. PSA 1 does get the thumbs up from me, despite the price, and it's really good if you're doing voiceovers and narration on YouTube, or you've got a podcast, or maybe you want to sound a little more mellifluous on the Zoom calls we're all doing a bit more lately. So that's it for this one. There are a few small projects that I need to do in this room to get it the way I want it, namely getting rid of that wallpaper, so I'll be making a few more videos as we're going along. So I'll see you then.